Hello, and welcome to Online Studio. My name is Jessica Arsenault, and I'll be your host for the event. I work in the Learning and Community Engagement team at the National Gallery of Canada. As we begin this event, I want to acknowledge that the National Gallery of Canada is located on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation, who have been the guardians of this territory since time immemorial, in the present, and for the future. As we're gathering virtually tonight, we're coming from so many different territories. So I encourage each of us to learn more about the land on which we are and our responsibilities to it. This is the program for tonight's event. First, a short introduction to the event by me. Then artist Jeremy Watt will present the setup and tools required for today's workshop. Finally, we'll spend the rest of the session with Jeremy in a printmaking workshop. A few notes before I pass it to the artist. This workshop will take place in English. If you'd prefer to attend a workshop in French, you can find the list of French online studio sessions and watch past sessions on our website, gallery.ca. Cet atelier aura lieu en anglais. Si vous souhaitez participer à une session en français, vous pouvez trouver la liste des ateliers à venir ainsi que les enregistrements des ateliers passés sur notre site web beauxarts.ca. This talk is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel in the coming weeks. Throughout the evening, you're invited to communicate your questions and comments with us by using the Q&A box that you can find at the bottom of your screen. We'll do our best to get to your questions. I would now like to present artist Jeremy Watt. Jeremy Watt is an illustrator, printmaker, and serial hobbyist who loves learning, trying, and sharing art techniques and mediums. Jeremy developed a love of drawing at an early age, which has since expanded into a passion for printmaking, allowing him to combine the two art forms. Welcome, Jeremy. Hello, all. Hello, Jeremy. Hi there. I just realized, too, in that photo, I'm wearing the same shirt. It looks like it's the art, the block printing shirt, so we'll keep it consistent. Hi there, Jessica. You're okay. welcome to introduce yourself. Hi there, my name is Jeremy. I'm originally from Toronto, uh, but I've moved and I'm creating and I'm working out of Winnipeg, which is which I'm a guest of on the Winnipeg's uh, Territory One, uh, Treaty One territory. So um, I'm happy to be here and excited for tonight. Thank you so much. So we'll now go to a video that Jeremy has prepared for us that shows the materials you'll need tonight. Hey there, we're going to get right into setting up your workspace. And there are two in particular that I work with that have a different setup for each thing that I'm doing. The first is the transfer and carve space. It's where I have my different sized blades for my lino cutter, along with my block and my reference image to put my design. If you signed up for this online session, or if the list in the description of this video with all the supplies look a little overwhelming, I get it. But the benefits of getting to supplies are that they're reusable, like the lino cutters and the tools. And it's worth finding what works best for you with the consumables, like the ink and the rubber blocks and the paper. Either way, work with what you're able to, and I'll walk you through each step of the way. There are several ways that I transfer my designs, and it depends on the medium. For rubber blocks, we're going to transfer the design with a pencil, and you can follow along with me to do the same. Now, if you haven't done it yet, use the link on the screen or scan this QR code to get a block printing reference guide where it goes over all the tools, the carving and inking tips, as well as the design for today's session project that we're going to do together. Now, if you didn't get a chance to download and print from the guide, don't worry about it. You can draw your own design on the block and follow along as we do the steps of carving and inking and printing it all together. And if you did print it, make sure you print it at 100% because if you scale it up or down too big and it won't fit on the block and too small, it'll be a, more of a difficult carve because uh, it's smaller. To set up the space, I want to make sure I've got it all within reach. So I've got my pencil, my block, and my carving tools. My rubber block here that I'm using today is a Speedball Speedy Carve. I'm a big fan of this because of how easy and smooth it is to carve into, as well as how easy it is to transfer my designs onto. Now you can use other blocks that are available to you, but each has its own idiosyncrasies of how to transfer and carve. Some are more dense, so you have to apply a bit more pressure. 
and some have a second color beneath the top layer to show you which part you've carved away. Each have incredible uses, but my preference is the one we've got right here. Now here's a brief overview of the tools and what I use each of them for. If you bought from the supply list for this session, then you should have a speedball lino cutter with three different size carving blades that can be conveniently stored in the handle. I've got a number one, a number two, and a number five. And you can tell what they are with the tiny embossed number on the back of each blade. Each have a specific reasons why I love to use each one. For the number one, the size being the smallest, I use it for carving the details and finer lines. It's what I'd use for the veins of the plant and the details of the pot because of the narrow shape. The number two is for the general carving away of the outline of the entire design as well as the individual leaves. I use this to create a channel or like a moat around the design and I'll get into that when we start our session. The number five is for clearing out the portions of the block and can help you set up to make a stamp that has the least amount of spots where the block will transfer any ink onto the paper. To change out each blade for each number, here are some tips for you in case you disassemble it and it falls apart in your hands. And if you find yourself in a spot where you have these lying around, it's all good. I've got you. Take these two smaller pieces and make sure they're lined up like this. Reversing these will not allow the blade to be set in place. It may make the blade hard to remove from the handle. Once you have these in this orientation with the rounded tip together like this, pop it into this top portion of the tool until it sits snug. Then attach the handle to this portion until you feel a little resistance. That way when you are swapping out the tools, all you need to do is loosen it up slightly to allow enough room for the blade to sit in this gap right here. Once the blade is in place and the words on the blade are no longer visible, you can tighten the top portion to the handle. You may need to adjust this as you're carving along because of how tight you make it. Too tight and it's harder to swap out and too loose and the blade will just pop right out when you're carving. Real quick, if you are carving for multiple sessions and have many, many pieces down the road and you find that your tool is either not looking right with the blade carving a little wonky or not as well, it's probably because the tool has a small burr on it that's giving you a less than desirable control of your carve. To work that out, here's a tool by FlexCut. It's called a slip strop. It's got a compound that you rub onto multiple surfaces depending on the shape of your tool. And it's really useful for sharpening the blade or the tool as if you're taking it out of the box for the first time. So look into picking something like this up to keep your tool as sharp as possible for your carves to be as great as you want them to be. A few other things that are good to have around is masking tape and a small spoon. This is for when we're transferring the design here onto the block. We'll be using a pencil to trace over the design over this session. So the masking tape is used to hold the paper in place when we're transferring the pencil marks onto the rubber locks. The spoon or the bone folder or even the back of the slino cutter can be used to burnish or rub the pencil marks from the paper onto this part of the block. The last tool is an X-Acto knife and it's used to cut out the design from the block. I mean, this sharp tool is helpful to separate the different parts of the designs and can also use them as stamps. And now that you have your transfer and carving space set up, we're ready to chat about the next part of setting up your space for inking and printing before we start the session. So this is what it would look like. When I'm adding ink to the block and getting it ready to put onto the paper, I like to keep the space clear of any small pieces of rubber that I've carved away. I mean, this has a less chance of the little bits of rubber getting into my ink or on my paper when I'm transferring from the inked up block. So keeping this space dedicated to inking is kind of my main priority. In this space, I'll need my block printing ink, a tool like a palette knife or even a plastic one to put my ink onto my inking plate or a glass cutting board if you don't have one. Now what you want is a non-porous smooth surface for you to put ink onto for the brayer to roll onto really nicely. Now this is a brayer. This is one that I'm using and hopefully you are too. This is used to transfer the ink from your plate onto the block. Then you'll want your paper stock of choice close by. I mean, you can use some regular computer paper or scraps or newsprint to do some test prints first. But a paper that you want to use either to give to others or for yourself is good to have close by so you're not running around trying to track down your paper while your ink dries on your plate or your brayer. The paper I'm using is a speedball printmaking paper. You can use whatever you have around, but stay away from the paper that has too much of a texture or properties like watercolor paper. 
because the texture doesn't allow the ink to set in the place that's inconsistent, unless that's the look you're going for. After I roll the ink onto the rubber block, to get the ink to transfer onto the paper, I use a baron. Now this is a tool that I can either burnish by rubbing in a circular motion or apply even pressure across the block to transfer the ink onto the paper. Now, if you don't have any of these tools, your hands or someone else's is fine as long as you have consistent and even pressure across the block. Now, once you have all these things set up for your transfer and carve, as well as your inking and printing, then you're all set for today's project. We'll now go to the workshop that Jeremy has pre-recorded for you. If you have any questions during the event, put them in the Q&A and we'll either respond to them in writing during the workshop or live with the artist in a question period at the end of this session. So enjoy the workshop. So here we go. We're going to make a block print together right now or whenever you rewatch this again. The design I chose for this class session may look super intimidating, but I'm going to walk you through each step of the way. If you're looking at the details of the veins in this plant and don't feel comfortable or would like something more simpler, I'll walk you through that as well. But in the end, I'm hoping that you have a print that you're happy with, that you carve with your own hands and printed. It's why I love block printing. Each one is different and knowing that there's so much charm to each one makes it kind of both fun and challenging. So let's dive right into it. In the reference guide, you can refer to it as a go along or look back after the session is done. Well, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use to transfer onto our four by six block. And today we're gonna make a print that looks a little something like this. For the majority of this class, we're gonna have a top down view just to show you what I'm doing. But I may pop back on here just to give you some extra tips or for to move on to intermediate stuff or simpler stuff. So we're gonna start right away. So to get started, if you have this page printed out, we're gonna cut this paper just so that it's easier for us to work with. Uh, you can separate it from the channeling and the carving technique. So what I'm doing is I am just cutting it from the middle here. That way you can still refer to it. And if you feel like you want to do that as further down, you can cut it down even further by making it smaller. Right now. And by doing this, we're just making it easier for us to transfer onto our block. You can use either an X-Acto knife or you can use your scissors to cut this out. Now, once you have your paper, it's easier to work with. And so to start off, we're going to try to figure out what's the best place to start. And there's no easy or there's no right or wrong answer to where you start. And so what we're using is our pencil here. And we're going to draw all along the edge of our design. And draw all along the sides here and into the details here. And so what we're doing is we're doing this so that when we flip this and put this onto our block, and then we transfer it, the image will be onto the block and it'll be easier for us to carve into. So start off by getting your pencil in here. I'm just making it a little bit thicker because it depends on how sharp your pencil is. The more dull it is, probably the easier for it to, uh, to see. So, so I'm just doing a little bit more rougher here. You want to make sure you get all the details in here and this part's a little tricky because it's a bit narrower, but as soon as you start using your pencil to trace this out, you can see this design on the block a little bit easier. And these are just all reference guides here. It doesn't have to be perfect. These are plants, so there's no right or wrong way to do it. As long as these lines connect, you can be as rough or as organic as you can be with the drawings. So you want to go all the way around the edges, making sure you hit all the corners here, especially the corners. And 
go around the general outline of the block. So what I have is a general outline of the block here. Now I want to make sure I get the inside as well. So I'm just looking at these here. You're probably doing a lot quicker than I am or slower, but do it at your own pace. The main thing is making sure that you are able to get your entire design in here. And if you're not sure if you've used the pencil in the area, maybe you hold it up and then kind of take a look into light to see if the light catches a bit of the, the pencil marks. So I can see kind of where I've missed spots here. And then as soon as you're done that, you can start doing some of the other details, like the pot here. And these will be helpful later on when you have them. So it can be a little rough, but as close as you can get to the design. Now, like I said earlier, if you are hoping that it's a little more simpler, it's up to you. You can draw these veins as detailed, as simple as you want. And all you're doing is just creating veins for this plant. It can extend further down or as simple. So you don't have to do all these ones, but all I'm doing is just I'm adding these lines that are just going to be referenced for me to carve into. And if you are doing your own lines, make sure that they are in the direction of the plant. That you're not going to go across like this or like that. And so I'm just trying to fill in as much of this as I can. I know there's thick and thin lines for these veins, so if the more you fill in, the more you can see later on when you're carving but you can also choose to carve these or not. So I think I have all of the pencil marks where I want them. I can fill in as I go along here, but these are just referenced for me to carve. And when you're filling in these um, veins here, you're showing the, the value, um, how much, um, how thick of a line you need to carve later on. So because if you had just one line, you would carve just a thin line like this, but if you had a thicker line like that, you would probably carve, use a number two to carve around that. So hopefully you get to this point where you have covered all your areas here, filling in the lines as best as you can. So if you wanted to make these leaves as well, you can make these into stamps. And so what you can do is you can just go over these lines as well. So using your pencil, you're just carving just the outline of the leaf here just like this and then using the pencil draw in the values of these details here same with down here if you want to do this one just carving it out just printing it out incredible Okay, if you're happy with what you've done here with your pencil marks to make sure that you've covered the outline of the plant as well as the veins, then you're ready to transfer onto the block. And so I've got my speedball block here and just cutting it open gives us a chance to use this. Then you'll need your masking tape. This will help you keep the paper um, as tight to this block as possible. And so what you're doing is you're taking the, the pencil side that you've drawn and placing it on top of your block. And using the tape, you're taping kind of a hinge on top. So when you lift up like this, you're able to drop it down and so what you want to do is you want to apply pressure here using a, either a bone folder like I'm doing here or even, or even the back of this tool. You're rubbing and burnishing the entire spot here. And 
and using a spoon. Again, same thing, you're just making sure that you, the spoon, you wanna make sure you have all of this covered here. And because you have a hinge, you can take a look to see whether you've, and see that it's not enough. So you wanna use a little bit more pressure to transfer the, pe the pencil marks. So you wanna use either the sharp edge of the spoon or go back in with your bone folder or even harder with the back of this lino cutter. So again, taking a peek at it, this is a little bit better. And so we'll just do a couple more passes through. Just to make sure we have it. So I think this is probably the best that we can do without getting through the paper. And so taking a look at it, we've got a pretty decent transfer. And so what you can do is you can even go back in your pencil here and just go over some of these lines. Like this. Just retrace your plant outline. And go from there. You can also use the paper as your reference. So you can go back and trace over the designs here. Throughout the process of carving, you'll see me holding the block in my hands. And that's by no means what you need to do because um, my eyesight's bad. So I'm holding it up to my face as close as possible. But for your first time, or if you're not comfortable with it, keep the block on the table and carve away from you. We wanna be as safe as possible. And if you're not comfortable with the tool and the block, keeping it on the table will be the safest way just to carve around the design and moving the block as you carve. Now that you have your rubber block and your design in there, we'll get right into carving. And so the few safety tips before we do that, you're gonna be holding the carving tool with your dominant hand and your index finger to stabilize near the top there, right by that edge, um, right by that tip where you would have put the tool into. And so you are always carving away from you, not towards you. And you're pointing the, the sharp end away from here, obviously your hands, and as you're carving, you're carving uh, slowly. Please just carve slowly for your first go, just so you're able to control the direction of the block and your tool. And so right now we're making it kind of easy with uh, carving right where your pencil marks are. And so with, uh, I know I said I used the number two, but uh, I found that this design being so small, I'm using a number one uh, just to carve around the edge. And so what I'm doing is I am carving a channel around the design. And what this helps is just for later on when we use the larger tool, it will act as a guide along the block to uh, to carve around the design. And you'll see that when, I, uh, when we do that later on. So as you can see, I'm turning the block as I'm carving, I'm trying to make sure that I don't put any um, fingers or skin or other people in its way and so you'll have little bits of rubber fall to the ground, just uh, be able to make sure where they are and clean it up. And as I'm carving, I'll probably add a few additional notes because this process is a pretty meditative way to carve. Um, this is why I love it, just to be able to put my focus on doing something so slow um, because I'm pretty much in the digital world. so. Doing something like this where I'm carving by hand is so different and just so cathartic for me. And so I'm carefully keeping my eye on where the tool is and where the pencil mark is and following that line and carving away. Try not to carve into the design because if you carve into the design or towards the design, you might um, take out more than you need to. So there's little parts right here where you're 
in between the big leaf and the small leaf. And so that's where uh, the speed comes in handy where you're um, slow to carve. When you get into details, you also want to slow down so that you don't carve away too much and lose that stem. Remember to breathe while you're doing it because sometimes if you're so nervous and you're just carving away, you want to be able to focus that breathing, take some time to stretch that neck if you've been carving for a while. <laughs> you didn't think this was going to be a yoga class, eh? But I, hopefully that you'll uh, you'll learn to know when to take breaks for when you're carving. You want to be able to do this for a long time, so doing taking little breaks will help. So I think I'm pretty happy with how it's going. I'm just fixing it up a little bit. The thing is a little part. If you find that the tool sometimes gets stuck in the rubber block, it's probably because it's you went too deep. And so you just move the tool out and just uh, keep at it um, by just yep, getting back to that 45 degree angle. And so as I hit into these little details of the stems, the shape of the tool, the V tool, is very helpful for this situation where I'm carving from the narrow side, the tapered side, up towards the wider side. And I can repeat that step. And because of the size of the block, and the size of the tool, and the size of the design, I can just go pretty much just up the once and uh, for the wider ones I can kind of go from one side like this stop and then go up and then carve the other side of that block then rotate my hand rotate the block a little bit just to get the side and then clear it out as much as I can this is where being careful helps so you don't go right into the leaf this is just the stem part so this is why the one is very handy. He gets those fine details of the stems. So I'm able to start and stop at a certain spot. So you're just carefully keeping an eye on where your designs are, letting the pieces fall. And if you make a mistake, that happens. I totally get it. It makes it part of the process of making mistakes. But sometimes because it's such an organic piece with a belief, you kind of get and get away with it. So going back in, clearing out the insides, being aware of the negative space where the plant is. And going back with the tool. Sometimes there's a tendency to try to dig too deep just to make sure that the, the block doesn't have that ink seep into there. Um, but you also don't want to go through the block either, so... Um, knowing how far and how deep your your tool goes in and then clearing out is very helpful for future projects so you don't kind of puncture your hand. For a bigger piece like this, I like to carve just the outside edge first, um, just going around where the pencil mark is. And then I can either use the number one and clear it out or I can switch the tool. You're going to be switching your tool many times. I'll probably tell you this later on, but... I'm using the one to just clear it out, or you can use the two, uh, the number two tool, and just clear it. I think that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm kind of contemplating whether or not I should switch it out, and totally worth it, because the number two is a, a good workhorse to do the majority of the stuff. And so check to see which end is the number two where the blade hits. So you want to check to make sure you're putting the rounded edge into the tool and not the sharp end and it should fit in snugly and then and so now again i said number one was great for the details but i think we want to simplify these veins a little bit so i'm using the two to just clear these veins out a little bit easier it's just kind of one pass as opposed to really tiny ones this will be helpful for new um, new carvers as well as just for those that want a simpler design and so I'm using the number two to clear out kind of where I drew the lines where the pencil marks are and so I'm following the design of the leaf making sure that I don't extend past it and go right to the edge there and so carefully turning the block rotating the wrist slightly and then taking out the, the, the veins 
there's a lot more, so we're going to go through each one. Take your time. You can decide whether or not you want more veins or less veins. I keep calling them veins. I hope that's what they're called. I should have checked that before I said it. But uh, those lines in the middle of the leaf, that's what you want to carve. And so this number two is great because it just kind of does a one pass. And however deep you put it in, that's kind of tapers. And you'll see for yourself. You can also practice on the side there to see what works best for you to dig, to carve away deeper or carve away more shallow. But this is where it's fun to, ex to experiment with the tool. Now, when you're watching this, I... Uh, realize that it doesn't look very safe, but I'm pretty comfortable knowing how to stop the tool from going further and taking out a finger. But I've also worn a lot of band-aids from my tool going a little too far, but getting a little ambitious when they get the big cars and you know you're gonna get a good confident swoop. Fortunately in this one car I don't have any casualties with my fingers so and just for the sake of this class too I'm also keeping it pretty simple like keeping those lines um, consistently to the shape of the leaf and carving away simple just so you can follow along and not get too detailed if you're more into the style of detailed um, blocks you can definitely go in with the one to make the lines a little thinner or add more lines if you'd like to. No one's going to say these leaves have too many veins, but it's your call. You make you get to make the decisions on how this block looks. So using the right tool to get that look is kind of, yeah, up to you. And so you kind of look back to make sure, and I think this is where I go back and clear that out. Sometimes you don't need to go that deep into the block just to know that the ink won't go into those little carved away pieces, the little pit. You don't really want to flood the block, so carving away at a certain depth is good. You don't want to go too deep where you're hitting to the other side, but you also don't want to go too shallow where the ink fills it and then you won't have that detail where that, uh, that leaf goes. It really is okay to take a break and step away from a carve if you've put a lot of time into it. It's a fresh start and fresh eyes on a part of the carve that may need a bit more attention. Again, take breaks and stretch. Hunching over and carving has been something that I have had to remind my students and usually myself, and they're grateful for it. So now we can use that number two to carve the details of the pot where the highlight hits right around the edge there and then the details within the pot. These lines are fun to do because they're kind of easy but practice them. Doing straight lines might not be um, your forte but practicing on a spare block is great just to try these different lines. Straight, curved, zigzag. The hardest one is a circle so um, we'll do that for another time but Doing a circle is one of the hardest ways to carve. So you kind of have to get the right tool, but also the right angle and the right movement of the tool. Now we can definitely switch to another tool, the number five. And this is what I was saying about how the larger tool um, helps clear out the edges more. And so um, you want to make sure that your tool is, again, like I said, make sure that the letters kind of sit below that neck. And you're using the five now to clear out the bigger sections just around where you did the channels. And what this does is um, it helps guide your X-Acto knife later on or that utility knife um, to carve around this because we're going to make it into more of a stamp. And I said for this class it's a stamp but you can also make art prints with it. And so, so that's why you're using this number five to clear out this area so it's easier for us to carve out later on. Just a quick reminder, if you have any questions while you're carving or any time within this online session, you can pop into the chat and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you are watching this after the online session, ask your question in the comments and you will find that 
Either another block print artist can have better answers that I can come up with, or I will periodically swing by the video to help answer any of your questions. When you hit to the edge here, be mindful of where your fingers are. I've been doing it for a little while and I'm comfortable and know how, um, how far and how hard to push. But when you're doing this, please be careful where your fingers are. Don't extend your tool and call me up and say, you owe me more band-aids because I cut my fingers because I watched your video. Um, I'm giving you the warning now, just slow, slow, and be aware of where your tool is and carve away, away from your fingers. Try not to overwork an area because you end up making it not usable. So I want to remind you to not ruin your blocks by overworking it. At some point when the tool gets too wide and it gets too close to the other designs, you can switch back to the other tools to clear out the area. So essentially this number five is just shoveling away um, the larger portions. Quick change up of the tool because I know that this is too close to the other design. So I think I have a number one here. And what's helping is that I can get close to there to clear out the area without cutting into the other design. And so when you're carving it out, you can choose which tool you can swap between the two, or if you have multiple handles, you can use different handles with different um, sized blades and just rotate between tools as opposed to changing out the blades so often. If you find yourself carving away more than your pencil line, like if your blade slips and it carves away a part of the design that wasn't meant to be carved, remember that this is an organic design with your own hand-drawn outline. You can go back into the block and shape the rubber to still maintain the look of the leaf. Only you know what this plant can look like. You're now a bit like a sculptor who has the task of removing the material and sometimes it doesn't go your way. So adjusting it and reshaping it, especially when it's a leaf like this, you can recreate a new looking leaf based on what happened. Either way, you're in control of incorporating that accidental carve into your design. And it's just part of the process of hand carved blocks. Now, because the X-Acto knife is sharp or any utility knife that you use, it's probably safer if you take the block and keep it on the table with a cutting mat below it. Use X-Acto knife and carve around the design where you have the number five. The number five is a great guide to make it smoother, but keep it on the table if you're not comfortable just to make it safe for when you're carving away your design. So when I think I have enough of it carved away, I will grab the X-Acto knife and carve around the edge to make this a block that I can use as a stamp. Cutting out as a stamp is easier to register onto your paper. And so you can see how smooth the exacto knife goes around the block because I've carved out with the number five. It has a bit of a guide just to carve around. So same thing with all our tools, just be aware of where it sits and how it's moved. And I rotate my hand a little bit to make that curve. You don't need to go as fast as this, but slow down whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm using this just so it's easier for me to remove from the rest of the block because I'll be probably making those into stamps later on. So as I round the corner, I know that my block is running smaller. So I need to know how hard I need to push that blade so that I don't fling the block across the room. Then once I have the block done, I can go back with my knife to see how much I need to clear out. I can trim away some of that excess where I feel like the ink is going to hit. And so I can either use my tool, which is helpful if it's another wider tool, 
Let's another swap out. This is the number two. Carefully think about it. Figure out where I need to carve. And I realized just right in the corner here, I missed a spot. Let's see if I get to it. Yep, right there. That's when I, because of the pink block, it can't really tell which ones I've carved and what I haven't carved. And so it's nice to hold your block further away just to see which parts you've carved and which parts you haven't. You can use one of the edges of the blade to trim away parts where you feel like the ink will hit. So you can use either this tool or the X-Acto knife, or you can just leave it and have a bit more characteristic of your block. Once I'm happy with the, that carve, um, it's, I can trim off the extra piece of rubber from the block to work on the other stamps. And so trim them off just makes it easier for me to handle. I'm just rearranging the table because I don't know what that else. Oh, I guess cleaning it helps too. So once in a while when you feel like you've got a lot of the rubber bits, um, you can either use it for stuffing presents I don't know you can send it to your friends to say hey look what I did or scrapbook to say this is your first block print now you can move on to carving your smaller stamps and so you can switch the tool again to something that whatever is easiest for you um, but what you want is you want to be able to same thing trace the pencil marks that you made so carving away the detail of this block like this where they carve away the pencil marks um, that part will be white that's gonna be the color of the paper and then what remains will be the block, will be the ink color. And so because I'm using a bluish green ink pad, when I stamp this leaf, the carved away bits will be white. And then the actual face of the block will be the color of the ink. So it's a good thing for you to remember when you're carving your next block, that what you carve away will be the color of the paper and what remains will be the color of the ink. So while we're carving, and if you want to hear my story, you can listen to this, or you can just turn down the volume, but I just want to explain why I love block printing and how I started. I started this three years ago when I picked up one of these uh, red speedball lino cutters from a local art store when I was visiting Toronto, which I'm originally from. I wanted to pick up a hobby like I typically do like every few years. So I found this and I thought that I'd give it a go. For most of my life, I've been an illustrator, and so I wanted to pair the two together to draw or design an illustration and then carve it out and make multiple copies for my friends and my family. And so this is why I love block printing. And you'll see this too when you're carving this, uh, this block here. It's a super generous art form. It's really unlike other art mediums where you have one canvas or one sculpted piece that you pour time and time into. With block printing, it's the same. When you pour and pour over time, um, you're able to reuse your rubber block over and over again if you take care of it to generously give or create pieces to sell because of the nature of carving your own block. And like I said before, because it's so meditative, the other reason why I love block printing is because it's so soothing and cathartic to carve away at a block. It's a space that I can and you can create for yourself to really narrow your focus and carve something. You've heard me say it already, I'm take it slow. And so I try to take it slow and create with my hands and it's something I'm super happy to balance with my life because I'm surrounded by digital devices even like as I'm doing this now. So creating something by hand was really the second reason why I love and I hope that you will learn to enjoy as we go through this project together. Remember, this plant is organic, so it doesn't have to be precise, but the lines should all connect. And you'll notice there may be imperfections in this carve, but 
there are things to love about it and to really love the charm of block printing. It really is best if you grow to love the little things that don't go your way like the chatter. You know, when the little piece of rubber still is on the block and you ink it up and it's on your paper. Now, a certain proportion of chatter is good if you're into it, but it's also an easy fix by carving that part away. Like each carve block you make is unique and even more is how different each print can look with each pull. And these can be really added textures that work in your favor and really shows that you as a human made this and not a duplicated copy from a copy machine or a digital illustration. Like I said, I find this quite meditative um, unless you have someone like me talking through this, but trust me, it won't be like this when you're on your own and doing this after watching this video. Really lean into that quiet, meditative place to carve. Do it slowly. You want to be mindful of your breath and posture. Something that struck me early on in doing block printing is that in the digital world, there's ways to undo a mistake. I mean, you can hit the backspace on your keyboard or hit Command Z to undo what you've done. With hand carved blocks, there really isn't an option to do that. You just have to roll with what you've done and adjust along the way. Remember, there's going to be mistakes. Now consider these a learning opportunity. You really can't be too hard on yourself with something like this. Each carve and each print, I've learned a little something from each one for my next one. I've even surprised myself a couple of times, and I hope it does for you too when an accidental carve goes in your favor to make your print look pretty great. It may have been something you didn't even plan on doing with your design. This trial and error period gives a chance to readjust how you make your next one. So take a look at how you've carved it and learn from it. And then the next one you can do better. Sometimes you do have to start over and that's just the way it goes. I've made portrait stamps where I overcompensated for a carve and when I accidentally gouged out the eyes from the block, I suggested that I make them now have glasses or sunglasses or an eye patch. And I've yet to have someone to be okay with that. So whenever you're ready to start printing, what I've done here is I've added a bit of ink onto my plate here and just a thin layer here and worked it in so it kind of warms up the ink a little bit. So we don't know how long it's been sitting into the in the canister. So I use it just to uh, warm up the ink onto the plate and then I roll it out. And when you're rolling it out, you want a an even texture on there. And if you look at it, it's a bit of an eggshell texture too the um the brayer and the sound that you should be hearing should be consistent it sounds almost like velcro but the sound the sound that's described is velvety so you want to charge your brayer with this ink and you're checking to make sure that you have full coverage from from end to end with ink and so what we're doing is now is just rolling onto our block to make sure that we have um all the parts we want carved On the block. So what I've done is I have added a bit of ink on here and you want to kind of take a peek too just to see the texture of it that it's consistent with the brayer um, and you know we've missed a little spots here but that's okay. So right now what you're checking to see is if you need to carve any more in these areas here. Um, there's a bit of spots here and so you can either just choose to to carve it off like this or leave it in um, either way we're using a just a computer paper just to test the print and so what I'm doing is I am placing it on the paper and registering is okay for now because we're just using it to test print and so we're now we're using our Baron to push down even pressure using one hand to hold the block down so that you're not picking up the block as you lift up the Baron. And so you're hitting each spot 
with an even. In this situation, we wouldn't be rubbing or burnishing because you would move the block around. You would lose a bit of that. And so, like I said before, you can also use your hand to make sure you have full coverage so you kind of get the edges here. Remember, you don't want to shift the block or else it will smudge the print. And so I also have a rag here because I am notoriously messy with my hands and not being aware of where my ink is. And so now that I have my hands clean, my hands are going to pick up this block. And this is the most satisfying part of block printing where you can peel and see how much you've done. So now that I've done that, I can also just take a peek just to see how I'm doing. It looks pretty good. I feel like I need to do a little bit of spot right there just to push down. As I lift it up, I mean, obviously I shifted a little bit, but this is just a test print just to see if I've got all my leaves carved and how I want it. And I think I'm happy with it, just the way that the veins are, are going here. And you can make it as simple or as complex as you want for your design. So I think I'm happy with this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and use this as my, um, as my good to go print. So. Same thing, kind of leave that side here. Keep your space as clean as possible. At this point from talking, I think I might still have enough ink. If not, again, this is what I did. I grabbed a little bit of ink here. Not to go too deep into the, the ink pile here because you don't want to create more air to go into the ink canister, but just adding a little bit of ink here and then warming it up with your palette knife or a plastic knife like I'm doing here. Again, we're going to charge this brayer. We're just adding ink on there. So I'm picking it up as I go along. If you are rotating the block, you're just rotating the roller with ink. It's not getting all the spots. So I kind of like lift as I'm lifting. That's kind of the sound you want to go. You can go side a little bit. But now that we've charged it and have enough ink, you kind of look at the texture, it works. You go back onto your block. You want to cover all the spots you just previously done. Because we're just, for funsies, we're just uh, making this block print. Um, no sense in going overboard with the registration, so I'm just going to by eyeball it. Use my hands to guide my hand, um, the block. Now I mentioned registration quite a bit and what that means is taking the block and having a consistent place to put it onto the paper that you're printing on. Making multiple prints, you want to keep it kind of in the center of where the paper is. And so you don't have to do it for this project, but it's good to know for future ones. Once you drop it onto the paper, you've kind of committed to the location of it. And so again, you can go back with their Baron and apply even pressure. And making sure you don't lift up the block as you do that. Again, you can also use your fingers and make sure all the edges, it's like massaging a little pink block here. You want to get the leaves on the side here all set. And put a little oomph to it, put your shoulders into it. But as soon as you do that, I'm going to carefully lift it up just so you can see it better. But essentially what you're doing is you are Making your block print. That's kind of what you want, I think. All right? And so you can choose whether or not you want to add a few more details in here if you want to carve away some parts here. Um, I have some of ink pads here that I can add an extra, extra color here. Adding a dab of color. I'm just stamping it along here just to get a little using this stamps here. And see so here you go. Your first attempt at a block print. So I thought I'd take a few minutes just to explain how you could make a two-color print. With this block and so what I'm doing here is I'm using the exacto knife I'm just carving the part where it separates between the plant and the pot I'm carefully cutting away 
and uh, separating the pieces so I have a bit of a puzzle block. It's where the two pieces can fit together. And so to add a little bit more ink onto my plate and just spread it around just to warm it up just again uh, with my canister open. And then just charge the brayer and just ink up as much as I can. There's kind of a trick to knowing how much ink to put on by hearing how it sounds on the plate. And so if I'm using my brayer and just rolling it back and forth, I can hear whether or not it's too little or too much ink. If I don't hear any ink moving around, maybe it's just too much ink and it's just kind of glooping around. Um, but if I'm hearing for that velvety sound, that little Valkyrie sound, that's when I know that I have enough ink. Then I'll use an ink pad here. I'm choosing the color red, just dabbing a bit of that ink on top of it, just covering it and keeping an eye on so I don't pick up the block and drop it on face down. And so, so what I think I might do with this is I will put the paper on top of the block rather than the other way around like we did previously, just to show you what it's like to use the Baron and uh, use a circular motion to burnish the paper, um, to add that pressure, slow circular motions, not too big because this print isn't that big. And so I want to just put enough pressure that I know that the ink is going to stick to the paper. I'll probably just use my fingers mostly just to get all the pressure of the paper onto the block. And then I also have the option to use the bone folder to add that pressure back onto the paper or onto the block. And then once I'm done, I just peel it up and now you have a two color print. With this two color print, you're now able to make a puzzle block. And so whenever you're planning for your next project, you can use uh, whatever design you have and carve around it so that you can make it two colors instead of just the one single one. So I'm hoping you're happy with what you've got in your hands and have carved today. It's a learning curve to carve and to shift your brain on how to design. Thank you so much for following along. If you want to send me a photo of your print or if you have any other questions, drop them in the chat below or message me on Instagram. I'm really looking forward to hearing about what you've made and seeing how you continue on with making some beautiful and creative block printed pieces. Thank you so much to Jeremy for this workshop. So I'll invite Jeremy to join me again and we already have several questions in the Q&A for you, so. That was a doozy. That was, thank you for your patience <laughs> to do all of that. But yeah, I'm Lots hoping that nice you all questions for you. got some great, yeah, great, some great work with that. So, yeah. Great. So um, I'll start right ahead with some of what we received. First, there was two questions that was about the blocks that you use for carving. Um, the first question was as asking linoleum versus speedball, easy carve, any recommendations or thoughts? And the second question was, I noticed different types of blocks at the store, but don't mm -hmm. really know the difference. Could you explain? For sure. So it depends on what you are printing as well, because there are um, linoleum pieces, which are a little bit more harder, like they're more dense. <clears throat> so if you got a rubber block for this, for this project, you'll find that the carving tool is smooth. They can go in. Um, there are blocks from even from Amazon that you would have that is a little thicker, but the speedy ball, um, the speedball one, it has a good a mix of being able to carve nicely like butter and then there's the dense ones that are thicker um, both work linoleum is good for like more art prints <clears throat> um, the um, speed ball speed carve any rubber blocks are good for making stamps or even fabric printing and so there's lots out there it's different um, quality inks uh, quality blocks and the main difference is what you're we're using I found people that found linoleum harder to carve because of the dense like the material of making it people have used floor uh, flooring linoleum um, there's options for um, linoleum mounted on wood block so it's a little bit harder so uh, a rigid surface for you to carve away so there's different preferences for what you want to end up doing i've used both for um, art prints i've made uh, greeting cards with them just uh, it all depends on what it is and whatever is available to you too. Cause you can say, I want the, the, the best or whatever is um, most helpful, but if it's not available for you or you're having to buy in bulk, I've also recommend seeing people <clears throat> buy a larger sheet of rubber block and they can trim it down a little bit. Um, so 
that's an, that's an option there. Thank you. So I'm hearing kind of thinking about what type of project are you you trying to do and also Correct. what's your perf personal preference in terms of how hard the material is to carve. Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we had another question that was asking, I'm curious to hear on your opinion on including chatter in your print. Uh, do you like it or do you prefer a cleaner print? Chatter, just for those that are, might have a question, is when you are carving away a block and there is extra material that's left on there. And when you're rolling the ink um, onto the block and you transfer onto paper, there's a little bit of ink that kind of transfers from the block onto the paper. That's a little bit called chatter. That's um, leftover. It's it's all situational because I was like a perfectionist. I'm like, I want it to be crisp and clean. And from just even from what people have said online, they said embrace the the charm of printmaking to know that that's part of knowing that it's hand carved for one, but also to just let go of the perfectionist way of doing it, right? Like this, the block that I just had here, pardon me. Um, yeah, it just has different reasons why you would like it. If you want a crisp design and there is um, chatter here, you can be intentional with it if it's a drawing um if it's a block print with um fish then you could have use a chatter and use your tool to carve into water ripples so if you're intentional with a chatter um it turns out looking great um but sometimes there are blocks that just naturally have that because of the way you've carved it that leaves that um there are ways that if you're rolling the ink on and you find that there's ink on the part you don't want you can quickly grab a cloth and just clear it off uh, or I've seen people just really quickly just put masking tape on the spots where it has ink just so they can get that ink onto the paper right away. So chatter is a matter of preference. In the block printing world, it's, it's either intentional or it's just um, sheer time. Or But it, it has helped me realize that I can't control all of it. And it's um, the perfection is between like, sometimes I show it, they're like, is it a, a photocopy or is it an actual block print? So there's different ways to approach whether or not you like the chat or not. Thank you. So, um, so there was two questions around positive negative space. The mm -hmm. first question, Jeremy, I'm wondering if you ever run into problems when carving, remembering which parts you want as negative space and which as positive space. And I'll go to the second question just so we can. And the other one was, what advice can you give in order to decide whether to create positive or negative space? So how do you deal with positive negative spaces? Right. So that's a part of block printing, of using the part of your brain is like, what do I do? And so I've created a block um, that I use. So this is a block that you can see. Um, I carved the word carve, but the way to explain it is you've carved um, away the pencil block, uh, the pencil marks that were on here and you've carved around the pencil marks, right? And so what happens is that you look at this, you notice here, it's, it's, not, your, it's not your computer, it's, I showed you that when you carve words uh, as your design, you need to carve them backwards so that they appear um, correctly because you're, you're doing the negative. For, for negative and positive space, it's um, a matter of your preference. What we did for today's project was carving away right? We carved away the, the veins from the plants. And so to decide that it depends on your preference of whether you want a print that this would be a this would be a carve around. And then the block itself, I don't have the block with me, but the block is now removed. And so like I mentioned it before, what you carve away is the color of the paper, which you car you know, what less gets left behind is the color of the ink. So it depends on whether you want an illustrative look, usually the folksier designs are more carve away, more large blocks of color with your design and then white details, right? So um, yeah, the design that we had, this would be a little bit of both. This is carve around the, 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 the silhouette and then carve away the skeletal. So it is. it depends on your design. It would have to be a show me what you want it to look like and then design from there. Usually when you're designing it, coloring in your values, like whatever you want to be dark, coloring it in just gets your brain to think about what do I need to leave behind and what do I carve? So I've seen people use that sheet of paper, um, that design that we had here. Um, 
this just reminds you whether or not you're carving away or carving around. So again, that might be a give a message. Let me see what you want to try to make. So thank you. Yeah, that can be yeah. a helpful tool to remember, like as you're drawing yep. it in. Yep, carve away or carve be. around. Exactly. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Um, another block related question, um, mm -hmm. is the speedball block forgiving for reduction printing? If you're wanting to do any reduction prints. Reduction print again, also just to clarify what it is, it's, it's your design is printing multiple colors, um, multiple colors. Your final print will be multiple colors. And what you have to try to conceptualize is what you're removing away from the block. And so it is kind of a final piece of so the lightest color. So you work from the lightest color to the darkest color. So if you wanted for this, I wanted a blue sky. So you would roll ink on here, blue sky, and then you do the next design um, and you carve away. So reducing the, the block. Um, technically, the, what you usually do for those are linoleum. So between, which is forgiving, they're both carving materials that you carve away. Um, the more you carve away from the rubber, the more it can fall apart, especially if it gets closer to the edge there. The integrity of the, of the, the the rubber block will might fall apart whereas majority of linoleum pieces have a, a burlap or a, f a fabric in the back to kind of retain the the integrity of the block so i would say for reduction i would lean more towards linoleum just to plan out your design carve it away and then reduce the um the number of layers that you're doing for different colors thank you and there were some questions around, so you carve uh, holding your block in your hand. And there was a few questions saying, should we be holding it in our hand? That's Can we have right. it on the table? Do you want to share <clears throat> some more about that? I want to show your hands. Or I can't, you can't see it, but if you have a Band-Aid right now, it's probably because you did it better than I did. But I, there's different, I, I can mention, putting the block on the table is the best practice for just even learning how to do it. You're carving away from you. But there's also a tool called a bench hook. And so what it does is it hooks to the edge of your uh, table. I can't have the great angle here. Um, it hooks onto the edge of the, uh, of the table and you put the block on the very end here. Um, pardon me. And the end here. And then you carve towards it. And this edge here kind of holds it in place. So doing that is the best practice for safe. If you're old like me with my eyes, I can't, I, I have to kind of hold it like here just to carve. But my hand, I, I, for the most part, it was shown that I didn't carve into my hand. I didn't cut away just to show that. But recommended to have the block on the table. And if you need to get closer to just carve towards it, that's probably best. Um, take those breaks, those neck breaks, because you're hunched over. It's another one of those things that you forget because you've been doing it for so long, but you can most definitely even hold it up for some details to catch the light. That's fine if it's small carbs, but majority of the time, if you can keep the block on the table. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, and especially for beginners, we don't always know exactly how much pressure to put, exactly. how hard to press. So it's yeah. easier to slip. So um, you might want to start on the table and that can be the most stable way to feel confident in yeah. your carving. Yeah. Yeah. I would also recommend that whenever you do a design onto your block, see this extra space here. If you want to practice your carve, because you might have different materials. This is linoleum. This is an Amazon block. And then there's the speed ball. Each one have different properties of how hard, like you were saying, how hard you push. So I would take that negative space that you're not going to use and just practice your carving, seeing um, practice doing small lines first and then deeper lines. Um, you won't know how deep you'll need to carve until you do your first block. And that's why we did test print first. We rolled the ink, put it onto the paper, and then burnished it. And when you pull it back, you're like, ooh, I wish this was a little bit more prominent. Carving it a little deeper will help. But deeper might also widen your lines. So you kind of have to play each out whether or not it works best for your application. So it depends on your design. Everyone's going to have a different design as you go along. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, actually, there's a question that was really related to that. So I'm going to yeah, read that sure. one. How deep should I go around the design? Great question. So each one, again, is different. I have several blocks here. Again, it's going to be harder to, to see the detail. But based on your carve, um, using that angle and carving weight, it is all depending on your ink. If you use an ink pad to, to stamp, usually you can do it lighter. But if you're using a brayer, 
the roller might roll into the crevices that you don't want. So I don't have a measurement for how deep you need to go. I've done pieces like this, um, like this one, where the lines are really, really shallow just to achieve. Let me see if I can feel a hold on. So based on this block, I was able to get this. So some lines were sharper and some lines that were deeper. So these lines would have been more shallow just to get that narrow line. And so depending on what you want, you can go deeper. So this section here would have been deeper just so that when I roll the ink, there's no chance that the ink is going to go in there. And then there's lines here which are more shallower that is just more delicate to, to do smoke. So it's preference and design. <clears throat> Thank you. Hope that helps. Um, there is another question about blocks asking, how do you take care of the blocks you've already carved of your carved blocks? Right. I did mention taking care. So having your blocks flat, lay flat, if you're leaving them up, usually they might start curving. If you put something on top of it, if you're not careful about how you store it, I have a plastic bin that I just keep kind of piling on top of each other. It does tend to stick depending on the ink. So taking care of it is after you finished inking it, washing it with um, soap and water to remove the ink. You don't want to scrub too hard because if you have small details like leaves that you kind of accidentally, because it's material that can easily fall apart, <clears throat> you want to be careful when you are washing it. When you Once you wash it, pat dry, leaving it flat so that you don't get caught on something. I have designs where it's like a, like, a, like a bird. And then this, if this were to get caught on something, or like if I'm picking it out of the bin and it catches on something, then you kind of want to have a better way to store it. So it's whatever is available to you, but I would recommend keeping them flat. If you want, you can keep paper on top of each other and kind of layer them or paper towels. Something just so that you can unfold, or I don't know how you would organize it, but I have a literally a bin full this may not be the best practice of what a bin <laughs> looks but it's easy for me to kind of go through it just to see which ones are there um so yeah taking care is meaning that you wash it off don't let ink sit on there for too long if ink dries on certain detailed parts you might need a exact exacto knife or utility knife just to clear out the, the ink that's set in there and again that depends on the quality of the ink that you use too if it's an older one it might get gunky and then it'll cover those spots and that really fine detail that you wanted uh, might get lost because you didn't scrape it out like any paint or ink that you use thank you you started mm -hmm. talking about it in your uh, in your response we had a few questions about how to clean the blocks is there anything else you want to add to how to clean the blocks um try to use less abrasive things even with um with linoleum if you are you plan on using a linoleum because of this material i found that when you put water onto it it starts curling a little bit um, just based on the property of it so what i do is i just leave it flat and i put a block on top of it and i just put a weight on it just to keep it flat um, but usually for for blocks i will just run my hand through it just to get the ink off of it and then dab it off so cleaning it is nothing abrasive don't use a, like a scouring pad to get it out there right maybe for the linoleum the linoleum blocks you're able to be a little bit more rougher because it's it's um the material is a little bit again if there's little pieces that get nicked off it's harder to put it back on and on that note i have seen people that have used super glue to get their piece back on there mm -hmm. if they're very adamant if it's just like i'm gonna do three prints that's all i need and they use a little piece you can but it's not for long longevity because the more you wash it, the more the water will kind of wash that super glue away and you lose that detail. And sometimes you might have a little seam that you didn't want in there. So, okay. So you want to try to be really gentle with your print from the start as, from your block as best as you can, because again, it's any, like any material I've seen, like any screen printer, my wife's a screen printer and she keeps her frames kind of lined up straight um, so that it doesn't get bent or warp because of washing it. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there is a question that says, if you're doing an art print, would you still cut it out as a stamp or what would you do otherwise? Preferences. 
preferences because I've I've made this into an art print before. Um, it's like a just a five by seven sheet. It's easier for registration. Depends on how you've carved it on the block. If for some reason you drew your design on here and it was slightly off, you know, it's slightly off, and then you have to register. You want a dead center on your paper, trying to register your block on the center of the page each time on a design that's off slightly will be harder to do that. And so again, from registration, what that is is just making sure that the block has a consistent spot on the paper that you want, especially if you're doing reduction print later on. You want to make sure it's a consistent way. There's lots of tools, lots of steps to make sure that it's uh, done well so that you can be accurate as well as much as you can. But some prints I've done with carving it out so that I knew that I knew exactly dead center right down there. Thank you. Just going to choose another question. Um, do you have suggestions for how to make dots, like the dots on your mitten design? Yes. So the tools, I have, if you all bought the um, speedball uh, tool with one, two, and five, the majority of them have a V-shaped. There's two, typically two shapes of tools. There's a V-shaped and a U-shaped. And the U-shaped ones come in various sizes. Um, the, I have different si shaped ones too. So if you're going to move into intermediate um, carving later on, um, there's different tools here by different companies. FlexCut is one company and file spelled P-F-E-I-L, Swiss made tools. These are more for wood carving, but great for carving um, rubber blocks just because it's so precise and so sharp. Um, that being said, so there's different tools that are that shape. The U shape will get you into that first kind of shape of a curve and then you rotate it and curve it, carve it out. So um, it's in the shape of a tool. For small dots, um, you could use an X-Acto knife you can just use precision, just carve around there. But what I did was I used a rounded, a curved tool, went from one edge, kind of carved around there, and then popped it out. So it's all in the tool, or if you're very precise, depends on the small, the, the precision of the dot. If it's a larger dot, you can use the V tool just to carve around the, the edge of that. Thank you. There was mm -hmm. some questions around ink. Um, someone asked, can you use, for example, Sumi ink? So I thought you might want to talk a little bit more about ink, what works well, what types of ink don't work so well. Yep. So I typically use like block printing ink has a different viscosity than sp screen printing ink or acrylic ink. So the point that you want is when you're applying the ink onto your block, it's the right consistency. If it's too watery or too runny, then uh, when you press it down between the ink the block and the paper, it just spreads out, right? So there's a certain reason why the companies like Speedball are, I'm not familiar with Sumi ink, but if it's too watery, then even when you slather it on, it doesn't have that ability to stick onto the block and then not run off the block. And uh, so then I typically use, even use an ink pad. <clears throat> ink pad is the easiest way to just stamp your block, turn around, and uh, because you have a surface that just inks the surface well enough without going too deep. Um, but I wouldn't do it with linoleum as much, just for the for the sake of it. I would probably use the block printing rolling ink. So um, the difference between those will be probably on how you use it. I've used 99 cent ink, you know, just um, that was block printing ink, but it was so watery that when I rolled it onto there, that sound that I wanted to get from the brayer onto the ink plate was just not there. And so that tackiness, there's a reason why that tackiness and that sound is great because it's just enough of a viscosity that when it's on the block, and when you pull it away, you're not fighting for those details. It retains the details more, right? Think of you have a wet sponge and you try to do a wet sponge paper. If you press that wet sponge on there, that water retention that's there spreads that water out and you won't get a precise imprint of your, of your block print. Hope that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, that. yes, yes. Yeah, you want the right thickness. That's why print, yeah. uh, block yeah. printing ink is, is a bit specific. And you wouldn't use a block printing ink for screen printing because the screen has certain mesh, right? So you wouldn't be able to push that ink through those mesh. So the right tool for the right job. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, continuing down the questions. There are what, other tools uh, later on. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. 
someone was asking a, a bit of a broad question, but what mm -hmm. is your design process when you design your own prints? Very broad. <laughs> it's usually just what comes to my mind. I will design things that just come to mind. Like I want to make a stamp of an acorn. There's no reason why I have that. Uh, a cat skeletal. There's the design process just comes from what I want and how much I want to carve, right? So those two larger blocks, I wanted something that was more larger that I can print. And so the design process is come with it. I do primarily use my iPad to design, um, to design and then print. Um, someone had mentioned on how to transfer other than using the pencil technique. And that was, um, I can briefly talk about that is mm -hmm. if you have a design that you design on an iPad or computer, if you print it out on a regular computer paper, print it out um, with a laser jet printer or inkjet printer, and then photocopy it, copy it. Because the process of what I'm doing is I'm ironing the paper onto the block. And so if I printed this out and I want to carve it out, I'm using the toner, which is a powder rather than ink, and I would put it onto the back, onto the, onto the block. And I would use, there's no setting on an iron for block printing, not yet. But when they do, <laughs> it's just a light heat that you're applying just with, you're, you're transferring the, um, the toner or the, the, the powder that's on there onto the block. And the difference between an Amazon block and a Speedball Speedy Carve is quite different because I've tried it with this one and this just melted. The paper melts to the paper uh, to the block and then but with a speedy carve with the right it can still melt but if you have the right pressure you're able to transfer it so the designing is all over the place from drawing on piece onto a piece of paper and then rubbing it like you did in the, the in the project using a bone folder or you can draw directly on i had someone say can i just draw on the block absolutely if you're a, a great illustrator illustrate on the block um, know that it's going to be reversed, right? When you do this, when you do the stamp, so you can draw right on the block. Or if you have our digital artist and you want to do something that's that that you've designed, printing it off, ironing it on, and that goes from there. And so um, that would also translate for whether or not I'm carving away or carving around, right? So I have a bit of both in my uh, on my yeah of, of all the things that I've made. Thank you. That'll help with a few. There were some questions around um, carving from a photo. A, a similar process could be used so that's helpful like printing the photo but on that type of paper and then using yeah. that doing a doing a photo would probably be really difficult because you're creating you're creating one medium of a face onto there so i would recommend if you're going to do something like that either have a light table and trace your the photo to get a design that's easier to carve or um, putting a tracing paper on top of your photo tracing the, the the outlines, the details of the face, and knowing what you're carving around, right? You would be carving around. Like, so if you were to do this, um, you would carve around the glasses to get that shape. So doing that with a, as a photo makes it a nice art print because carving a photograph might be hard because there's so many gradients so many in the details. color. So yeah, so many Thank details, you. So. We'll do one last question and then we're sure. going to have to close up. So For there's sure. a, an, another ink related question. Does oil based allow you to do more delicate design compared to water soluble? What's the difference between oil based and water soluble? Great question. So there's two kinds here is the, the acrylic one that is used, but I've also switched over to an oil based um, uh, relief ink. Speedball does a, a relief ink that's oil based, but it's water miscible, meaning you can use water to wash off as opposed to using um, um, solvents. For, so I switched over to this because of how crisp it was. It was able to get that tackiness. So in terms of the details, it did do better from my work. When I did these, um, this would be, this would have been the, um, this ink right here. Doing the, I tried this with the regular block printing ink and there's something about it. It's a mixture of the right ink and the right paper that you get to, to burnish. And so there's different applications. Some people don't like oil, just the idea of it and the cleanup of it. But other people said it's my go-to um, from, I posted one photo of me saying, what am I doing wrong? And the community went off and said, try this, try this. And have you tried this? And gave me so many suggestions that I switched over completely to oil and it was a game changer for sure. So listen to the people, try it out. It doesn't always work for everybody, but um, depending on what kind of design, using oil for small stamps is not so much. If you have a small design, I would I wouldn't use a roller for this. I would just use an ink pad for this. So, 
Thank you. Is there any last things you wanted to share before we close up? Nope. Again, just reiterating block printing is a very generous um, uh, way to just yep, share your work and to keep doing what you love doing. Thank you so much. Of so course. I really want to thank you, Jeremy, for this wonderful workshop. The best place to follow Jeremy's work is through his Instagram page at Made by Jerwat. I also Made, want to yeah. thank Alexia for sharing uh, an artwork from the Riappel Crossroads in Time exhibition with us. The exhibition is on display at the gallery until April 7th, 2024. If you wish to participate in more virtual workshops, there's more coming up in February, and we invite you to visit the gallery's website to browse upcoming workshops and register, or to watch past events. And finally, we would love to see what you made tonight, and we're inviting you to share it on social media. You can use the gallery's tags that you currently see on screen. You can also tag Jeremy at Made by Jerwat. Finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to each of you for coming, spending the time with us making art tonight. We wish you a good rest of your day, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye.